After a disappointing end to the 2023 season, fans were thirsty for more from this Husker team. Matt Rule looked to quench that thirst by attacking the offseason the right way, adding highly rated recruits, impactful transfers, and even experienced staff members to move the program in the right direction. Tonight, we'll break down all those changes and also touch on why people are once again drinking the scarlet colored Kool Aid. All that and more next on Big Red Wrap Up. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael Severe, and welcome to Big Red Wrap Up Live from the Nebraska Public Media Lobby as our studio is getting much needed upgrades that we will be telling you about very soon. But tonight, it's all about recruiting. And joining me to talk more about that, of course, is former Husker Jay Moore and Sean Callahan. Sean, and, and you know about it, this feels a little 2005-ish. There's so many guys. And both there's transfers and there's freshmen. It just it feels kind of like 2005. Yeah, with the new roster rules, too, you can be very creative with how you build this. So there's no longer a 25-man scholarship cap. Yeah. NIL allows you to be creative. So if you really get in the weeds, um, you know, Nebraska has added 37 scholarship level type players wow. in one cycle. And, you know, two, three years ago, that would have been impossible to do. Right. Um, you know, you look at the transfer portal, they're lighter this year than they had been, just six. But you look at all six of those guys, and you, you can make a case for all of them at this point that, you know, they're all pretty good additions. Bly Hill's probably the one that's developmental. Uh, but then, you know, you get that Dylan Riola. I think that's what kind of brought. Sure everything over the top yeah with that said you've got three quarterbacks on scholarship one of them's got eight games of experience and the other two are true freshmen that's a little scary that's a that's very scary i think obviously everyone knows about dylan Ryo, his pedigree yeah i mean and what he's able to do and let's be honest he's probably gonna be day one starter um, but yeah it's a little it makes you think like man okay we got uh Ryola, harburg um and then Danny Kalen, obviously, but you're just like, if anything goes wrong, yeah. you're kind of stuck in a, in, a, in a position. So maybe some more roster moves in, in after the spring ball just to solidify some areas. But, um, hey, a little more pressure on that O-line to protect and, uh, yeah. and uh, keep everyone healthy back there. You mentioned the NIL deals and how that allows some walk-ons to come in. That just shows, again, how well Nebraska is doing in terms of their NIL and the raising of money? Yeah, and you have to have a, a strong collective to be able to do yeah. that. And you, you look at just some of the things they've Even transfer portal guys, you can bring a transfer portal guy in as a walk-on. And then they can obviously... Even if they had a scholarship at the other correct. place, they left. Wow. I mean, I'll use it. Oliver Martin was a great example. Right, yeah. And that was pre-NIL era. But, you know, if you leave school A on scholarship and you have no scholarship opportunities, you have to go somewhere as a walk-on at that mm. point. So... Okay. You know, some of these guys, if they're over the 85, you know, you can, you can get creative and, and, and figure out a way to make it work with a transfer. Um, but we know of at least four of the high school guys that are technically, you know, they didn't sign letters of intent, but right. they're three-star rated recruits. Um, so, you know, give Matt Rule a lot of credit. Give his support staff a lot of credit because this takes a lot of roster management. to, And you have to be aggressive to right. do what they're doing. Can you bring that list up again? I want to... He said today, Coach Rule did, or yesterday, that he thought three, four of those could be starters, right? Who do you see on here? Who do you think? Pick me four guys. Well, Xander uh, Rujolari from Rujolari, yeah. um, Nevada, from, you know, I think he's a really, really good one. Um, Kamir Prescott is a walk on, too. And, you know, I think you know, earlier in the spring, he was one of the top safeties they had on the board. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think after Mario Buford, he's as good as any DB they brought in. I mean, those are the two immediately. Evan Taylor tore his knee. Camden Cook. Maybe Camden Cook eventually. Yeah, Camden Cook will be a yeah. starter after one year. I mean, Brian Buschini's back for his senior season, and then it's set up for Camden Cook. So those would probably be the ones. Achoa was once a Wyoming commit. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's a really quality group uh, top to bottom when you look at those walk-ons, too. Mm -hmm. So what kind of happened is we had all those discussions about how it was hard for Nebraska to get walk-ons because these guys had offers other places. Yep. And we know how much it costs to go to Nebraska now yeah. compared to what you, but now with NIL. It works. It works. It totally works. And uh, it makes guys think because obviously school's getting paid for. And yeah. if they're close to home or it's a great opportunity for them to develop and become a player that um, they've seen other guys, you know, be developed under Matt Rule. And I think that's the, that's the biggest thing I can take away from last year is how many young guys yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tactic you can use. It's like, listen, look how many uh, freshmen we played on defense yeah. last year. Right. Look how many freshmen we had to play mm -hmm. because of injuries at wide receiver. But look how well we were able, they were able to step in and play. And that's just our development. That's how we kind of bring guys along. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a nice thing to have in the, your back pockets. Like, 
you come here, we're gonna get you ready. We're gonna get you ready and you have to step in uh, day one, day two, whatever it is, uh, we'll get you ready to play. So I think having those guys um, kind of determine if they want to go somewhere else or technically walk on, right, yeah. and on a, an NIL scholarship, um, it makes you think because you want to come here and play and you want to play well and be developed the right way. No doubt about that. We have a lot to talk about tonight. We can't wait to dive into all of it, but unfortunately, our call room is not up and running. It normally would be right behind me, but <laughs> it's not today. If you have any questions, feel free to share with us via email, bigred at nebraskapublicmedia.org or on Big Red Wrap-Up social media accounts. We'll do our best to get to as many as we can, all your questions we can get to tonight. Also, be sure to vote on this week's sideline survey up on our website now. It asks, what's been the biggest win of the offseason so far? Retaining Tony White, bringing in key players, bringing back key players like Ty Robinson and Isaac Gifford, adding Glenn Thomas, or getting Dylan Riola. This shocked me. I thought for sure it would be the highest rated quarterback since Tommy Frazier that would have this. But going with Tony White. Before we get to all of that, let's check in with Matt Rule, see what he had to say yesterday after another successful signing day. It's really hard to compete and be your best if you don't have other great players around you. So anytime I see a great player, we're going to approach it. And they come in all shapes and sizes. Walk-ons, uh, transfers, scholarship players, five-star, no-star. It's all about what you do in the future. And so... Um, I've been pleased. I've been pleased with the staff. I've been really pleased with our recruiting staff. Our personnel department, I think, has done a great job of identifying players and guys who are good fits for us. A lot of coaches look at, like, hey, we need four of these, we need three of these. I don't, I've never thought that way. I always look for people I think can make a difference, and I always look for big people. You know, I'm always looking for uh, O-linemen and D-linemen, and I don't care how many we have. If we have too many, then it'll, it'll, it'll sort itself out. I think there's three or four guys that will start for us someday in this walk-on class. I mean, that's, that's a bold statement maybe, but I really believe it. And so I take it unbelievably seriously. You know, um, I've had some great walk-ons in my time, and no place is known for having great walk-ons better than the University of Nebraska. So quarterback should go somewhere, Mitch, where they, they, they are taught how to play quarterback from the ground up. And that's what I like about Glenn. The way he teaches the quarterbacks, they could, be, they could be in the air raid. They could be in the run and shoot. They could be in a pro-style offense. He's still going to teach them, um, and he's going he's to scaffold that teaching. <sighs> Recruiting doesn't mean anything about next season. It's just about all of our players understanding there's an urgency in this building. When you walk in this building, like, you've got to go. And I think we made some real steps last year. I think we fixed some things, but we're still 5-7. and seven. And so we're 5-7 and seven until we kick it off against UTEP next year. I truly forgot what the first game was. When he said, I was like, UTEP, really? <laughs> I was going to so say Northern Iowa. <laughs> well, we're so used to, right, it being a Big Ten game or a big game in terms of the in Ireland, maybe. Or <laughs> Ireland. There's finally a chance where, I'm not saying it's completely winnable because I don't know how good UTEP's going to be, but it is different. A, a schedule that will let you develop younger players. Exactly. You look at those first seven games. You tell me, how many of those first seven do you think Nebraska will be an underdog? And there, uh, there may not be an underdog. Any of them. And, and yeah. honestly, great year to get UCLA on the schedule right yep, now. Definitely. USC, you don't know what they're going to be like in late November. Ohio State, Wisconsin, Iowa, we know are going to be good. A lot of new quarterbacks. Uh, but I feel like the first seven, <coughs> all the way to October 19th, I mean, yep. what an option. You got Dylan Raiola, if he is the starter. Right. What a schedule to build the confidence up. They haven't had a schedule laid out like this in a long, long time. Yeah, it works out pretty well, no doubt about that. I want to ask you, because you've played with a lot of players that came from out of state. Yeah. I always thought the Florida guys were the hardest to keep because you get here and things completely different, mm -hmm. and obviously the weather. <laughs> um, then there's Texas. Which mm -hmm. one do you think is... I think Texas is a little more relatable to Nebraska. I can think of, you know, the the Cody Glens. Um, oh gosh, you know, the Demario Williams is technically from Texas, sure. um, even though I know he's a Juca other places. Uh, but I remember, like, I mean, Fabian Washington was a guy who was from, you know, Bradenton, uh, the Tampa area. Was in my recruiting class, uh, played as a true freshman, and obviously, you know, uh, was a first round draft pick. It, he loved it here, but that weather. I mean, <laughs> it just. I mean. They had to come and drag him out of his dorm room to go to class. He's like, I'm not leaving. Right, right. It is, there's four inches of snow. Today, right? There's four inches of snow and it's 10 degrees. I've yeah. never experienced this in my life. Right. So, um, no, I think Texas is a little more relatable. Uh, but Florida, yeah, I think, and we've seen that in just some, in, in recent years yeah. that we've had some Florida guys step on campus and then maybe they only last a year or two, unfortunately. There's a lot of them. Obviously, the Miami area, nice place to go. A lot of these are from big schools. What do you think, compare, better Grouping the Texas guys or the Miami guys? 
you know, you can make a case for both because the Miami class really took a bump late. I mean, you, you look at the last guys there, Sanders, Shavers, yeah. Tarver. Uh, that was a really, really nice group to end with. I think the staff has built better to keep Florida guys here. Mm. Uh, you know, when, when you look at just the different people behind the scenes that can relate to these kids. And, you know, we go back to that 2020 class. That's when they took the hit in Florida. Right. I mean, they, they had a bunch of kids that enrolled early during the middle of COVID. And, you know, and it, just, it just wasn't a, a good deal for anybody, yep. let alone young men coming from Miami to Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, hey, we're going to move all the, all the people out of Lincoln off campus. And, right. You know, you're going to be trapped here. I mean, so that, I mean, I think I look at that, but that was a tough deal. Um, but the Texas group, two legacies in that group, Ian Flint and, and Mario Buford, right. uh, both are legacies tied to the program. And that always helps. How important do you think it was to bring in Glenn Thomas to have a guy dedicated to coaching the quarterbacks, especially when you have two freshmen coming in? I think it's very important because you need all the help you can get, all eyes on, all hands on deck. Yeah. Um, and, a, you know, you need someone they can re just rely on to and call up and, bounce ideas off of and question this. Hey, why why are we looking at this in this coverage? Why are we doing this in this certain scenario? Um, I think that's just important because, you know, Coach Satterfield, you know, is tight ends and, you know, and obviously tight ends now, but uh, OC, you know, and I, I know he he's a coach. Yeah, yeah, right? Correct, Fine. yeah. So he just, you're, you only have so much time in a day, but then finally you have this guy that's situated towards quarterbacks and he's like, all right, we're, here's here's our point of reference. Here's our guy. Um, it's just you have more time with someone, and right. just and that's important because obviously you, we already discussed the three quarterbacks, um, and two of them being who never played a snap yet. At Nebraska, they need to be fully comfortable with the playbook, terminology, um, passing routes, passing trees, all that stuff, and get comfortable with those young wide receivers on this roster as well. Sean, I know Coach said, trust me, I know what I'm doing. We look at the numbers. We know they have a long time to cut it down, but that's a lot of guys over 85. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're probably at least 10 over, but we don't know the inner workings of the guys that are NIL players. So sure, I think we'll... They have and, about over 110, right, on the roster right now? Um, on scholarship, it's a little over 100, but I, I've had Camden Cook and some of those guys on there, and I know they're not all part of that. So right. I think what needs to probably happen is probably another four or five guys after the spring, uh -huh. and then they can kind of rework things. But... You know, Nebraska fans get worked up with that a lot, so. Yeah. So, for you, was there anybody that jumped out in terms of that stayed? Who's the most important ones for you? Oh, you know, I think I think Ty Robinson, you know, and Isaac Gifford. I think those are two huge, you know, guys are um, staying. I, you know, Nash, Nash is, is, is he was really good too. No, oh, zeros yeah. out there. Yeah, <laughs> they both he, he makes it look good though. Yeah, you know, he may, yeah. he definitely make it make it look good, but. Um, I think both of them could have could have left and be on a uh, you know at the NFL Combine here in the, in the next you know month or so. Sure. Um, I think NIL has something to do with that obviously as well to keep them there because you look at uh, rookie salaries and I don't know what they're getting on NILs, but it makes you you think to stay and, and have an opportunity to finally win here. I think they, yeah. they I think they can they can grasp that. I think they saw what was developed with Coach Rule in year one. I know they did not get to where they wanted to be, obviously, but they can see how close they are, yeah. and I think they want to be a part of that because they've worked so hard and so for so long and been a part of multiple staffs. And they've seen, um, I don't, they were, I don't think those guys were here with Riley, but with Frost, and they saw how it was, and then with with um, now with with Coach Rule, like man, we, we something's building here, so I think they want to be a part of that as well. I know they feel close too. That's yeah, thing. definitely. We we'll take a st step away for a short break. When we come back, we're going to dive into the additions on the offensive side of the ball. But as we go, we're going to check out some of the best photos from the 2023 season, courtesy of Herdat Sports.
Welcome back to Big Red Wrap Up. It's now time to dive into the offensive roster edition, starting, of course, as we always will, with the quarterback, Dylan Raiola, or Raiola, however you want to say it, it's fine with us. Um, you don't get a lot of guys, obviously, that are five stars that come to Nebraska. Um, to get a guy like this is just a huge break. It is, and, it, well, and just with uh, the, you want to call it drama that came with it, you know, he thought he was going to commit, doesn't, goes to Georgia, yep. transfers from Arizona to play high school football in, in Georgia, um, and then completely changes, you know, in the last and Ohio week or so. State was a commit. Yeah, to. yeah. So three high schools, three colleges. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's big. I mean, obviously, we know who his uncle is, who his dad is. Sure. Um, but the kid can play, uh, and he they, he works hard at it, and it's it's a generational type of talent right here. That and I don't I know I don't much I don't want to put too much extra pressure on a young kid, but it's already there. there. Like, so I'm playing Hawaii at the Polynesian Bowl. Yeah, as far as arm talent, I mean, I've watched a lot of young quarterbacks over the years. When he was a freshman, I had never seen a young quarterback get the ball out of his arm like that Easy. before. I mean, yeah. just, you know, and he can make a back foot throw with velocity, Yeah. which you don't want quarterbacks doing that, but if you're backpedaling, he can throw a, have to do on a rope. Yeah. So he's got arm talent we have maybe have never seen at Nebraska in a long time. Yeah, guys, because of Mahomes, everybody's going to make that throw now. Daniel Kaline, let's talk about him. Um, obviously, you know, he played on a team at Bellevue West, but they always thought maybe they'd get over the top, and they ran into – one of the greatest teams in high school history and a couple of years of West Side. So what do you think about him? Yeah, they were, you know, they battled injuries this year. Both Isaiah McMorris and Devon Hall were yep. injured. So I think it limited, limited what Bellevue West could be. But Kalen is very smart. Uh, you know, at the Elite 11, they do their version of a Wonderlick test. Mm -hmm. He had one of the highest scores ever. So a very cerebral, mature young man um, that, you know, was almost like a coach on the field the way he operates. And he knows the deal. Like, you know, it, Michigan State and some others tried to flip him. He wants to be a Husker. It's important to him. And these are the kind of guys you want to have in Nebraska. Yeah, because you look, you could look down the road. If everything works out, like it's supposed to Raiola, he stays here three years and moves on to the NFL. And then you know, Kaline's a, a redshirt sophomore. Yeah, you're, I'm glad it works out for a hometown, uh, you know, a hometown kid that wants to play here. Because remember, I mean, they told him, hey, we're going out to Raiola initially. But once, and he was a Missouri commit. And then once Rayola fell through, he commits. And you're, now you're thinking, when kind of Rayola fl flips again, what's the da Danny Kaline situation? And obviously, they're going to make it work. So um, he's going to get his opportunities, let's be honest. Like, no. he's going to get a chance to play. No, only one running back in the class. Yeah, Dante Daldell from Oregon um, transferred to Nebraska. 6'2", uh, 215, pushing 220. I mean, he's, he's a, a big – He's a – and, you know, one thing to note, Gabe Urban Jr., Ramir Johnson, will not go through spring ball. Right. So he is going to get a lot of reps with Emmett Johnson and Quentin Ives. Love his physical makeup. He's a true Big Ten back. Was in a situation in Oregon where they returned their top guys. Um, he burned his red shirt. He played more than four games last year. So he didn't really like that picture there. And I, I think he wants to go somewhere where he can compete. Kiwan Lacey was in this class, decommitted. Uh, Dante Dalvel, the only running back they've taken here, uh, really over over the last you know couple of cycles. Yeah, burned that red shirt at Oregon. But you go back and look at him at Mississippi. He was a top ten running back coming out. Mr. Mississippi. Mr. Mr. Mississippi. So he certainly is a talented kid. Let's go to wide receivers, and there are a lot of them. <laughs> we'll start with Jamal Banks, one of the transfers. The thing that jumps out, 6'4", 205. Yes, big Let body. Let me throw to that guy. Yeah, you get him, you get uh, Coleman now. You get some big, long, lengthy. Yep. I always think, you know, they always say catch radius. Definitely. You know, you like big bodies. You know, we, Billy Kemp's a, is a shorter guy, you know, they have to throw to, but these are big, you know, guys you can, you don't have to put it right on them. They can go get it. I wrote contested catch guy. If it's contested, he's going up and get it. He'll lead, more than likely, he'll lead Nebraska in receiving next year. You would year. think, yeah. I mean, on, if there are odds put out, he right. will, and it'll be the fourth year in a row a transfer portal guy has led the Huskers in receiving. Wow. Then the other transfer, Isaiah Nayar, he's interesting because of the injuries and he's been out, but again, six foot three, almost 200 pounds. And he can run, and they measured wingspans, and for his height, he had one of the longest wingspans, almost a seven foot wingspan guy wow. at six three. Yeah. Um, so extremely long armed. Uh, when he was coming out of Wyoming, he was the hottest receiver in the portal. He picked Texas over USC, mm -hmm. um, several other major programs, Tennessee, uh, got hurt and just never got off the ground in Austin. Uh, but I know he looks really good right now, really healthy. And, you know, you have to think that both him and Banks are going to probably be starters next year. It's interesting about him is very skinny kid when he got to Wyoming, had those two years where he was injured and really got in the weight room. He has put on like 25 pounds since then. So at least he did his work. Um, one of my favorite players, Ja'Cory Barney. I love this kid. He reminds me a little bit, and I know you don't want to give too much expectations, but he's a Debo type. 
Mm. Like, he does everything. Whatever you ask him to do, he can do. Yeah, that'd be great. It, it, as we've kind of heard of the, how they want this offense to represent the 49ers. Right. We've, we've heard that in the last, yeah. you know, few months. It seems like a perfect fit for him to use him as a running back, as a slot guy, as a, as a wide out, and, you know, and zip, jet motions, all these things, and uh, just an athlete, you know, and uh, another Florida guy that can uh, step in here, and I, I bet you have, can have a good chance of playing right away. He'll make you miss, too. In a small space, he'll make you look silly out there. He's a really talented kid. Uh, let's talk about Quinn Clark. Legacy, obviously, Ken Clark is Yeah, um, his father, the late Ken Clark. Yep. Uh, Got to give an Omaha Brian shout-out. His father was an Omaha Brian Bear. Yep. Michael's wife was a Brian Bear. That's so right. Yep. My mom was a Brian Bear, but right. uh, Quinn Clark, 6'5", 205, uh, one of the best players in the state of Montana. The top uh, player, right? Yeah, top player in, in Montana. And, he could run. He came to camp, ran 4-4, had like a 36, 35-inch vertical. Matt Rule's like, yeah, we're offering this guy. There's no question. And he's a legacy. Um, you know, and so it means a lot to him and his family to be a Nebraska Cornhusker. Yeah, he's 29 touchdowns over his junior and senior years. Every highlight is a touchdown if he wanted to make it that way. He's <laughs> about how good he is. Uh, Devon Hall, who we had on the show, we talked to. Um, again, injuries. Saw him take himself out of the game against Westside with the arm injury, elbow injury he had. But... Pure talent-wise, this is an athletic kid. Had one of the earliest offers from Nebraska ever. Was offered Sophomore. early in his freshman year. Freshman. Iowa offered him, you know, the first game of his freshman year. Right. So you know, he, he scored the first game. Th just to yeah. manage that type of expectation and pressure over a high school career, I don't think people realize it. I mean, you, you have a 10, 12-year-old type kid at home. Imagine within two, three years, they're going to get a scholarship offer. I mean, it's a lot. And yeah. he managed those expectations, got bigger, stronger. He's here early. So I'm really excited to see what they can get out of Hall in the spring. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how he handles everything. He had those injuries and had some issues. So I, I really wonder about that. Isaiah McMorris. Uh, smaller version, obviously, really quick, kind of a lightning bud kid. They, you need these two, right? You need a mixture of sizes. Yes, you do. Yeah, you, you need a guy that you can, you know, uh, you know, smoke screen. You get him out quick in a, uh, a bubble screen, whatever it is, and make some yeah. guys miss and get and get vertical. Um, you know, kind of figure Billy Camp was kind of that guy last this last year, and I think McMorris can step in and kind of fill that role. Obviously, definitely a slot guy. You're not going to see him out wide, but a guy you can get the ball to and, and get uh, get vertical real quick. I watched him against Gretna. It threw a smoke to him. Three Gretna guys in front of Benning. You know they are good tacklers. He made everybody miss. No one touched him. If they were playing tag, he still would have won the game. Well, he's, qui he's quietly put together just an amazing high school career. He's got a chance to win four Class A Dots State basketball titles because you forget he was at Miller North. Right. And he played on those teams, and he's been at Bellevue West. And, you know, his junior year at Bellevue West, he set a Nebraska record for receiving yards. So he, he's had an unbelievable career. And, He's a 10-7, 10-8 guy in the 100, mm -hmm. um, and, and so is Hall. So uh, both those guys can run, and, you know, he, he's not here early because he wants to obviously chase that basketball, basketball title. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's interesting having those guys. And then with the Daniel Kaline connection of him being their quarterback, that may be an amazing connection going forward. We'll see when he plays. Uh, Keelan Smith, who, who to me, he's going to become a tight end, right? Yeah, I mean, he's he's it says 6'2", 205, but in pads, he looks a lot bigger than that to me. You know, the, he's an athlete. He can move around a lot okay. of spots, but he was the Kansas City High School Football Player of the Year, had a massive season. When Nebraska took him, a lot of people are like, interesting. Well, then you saw what he did as a senior, oh, yeah. and they're like, wow, Nebraska knew what they were looking for. Another legacy, too. And, and son of Neil Smith, former Oscar great. Uh, but he had as good of a senior season, Michael, as anybody in this recruiting class. Wow, it's amazing. By the way, uh, his dad could have been an NBA basketball player. Everybody who watched him play at McDonald 35 in New Orleans said that guy could have been an NBA player. And instead, he went on to be both two different decades worth of players. I mean, he's borderline Hall of Fame level football player. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Hall of Fame level guy. Um, let's get to the tight ends because there's a good group of them and they already have a bunch of them in house. Let's start with Ian Flint. Talk a little bit about him. Yeah, another big body. I know we got a Katie, you know, uh, a Katie guy, uh, Texas guy. Uh, interesting to me how this is his size. I see with him and Eric Ingerson from from uh, um, Papillion. Could these guys potentially put on some more size and, and, be and, 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 and become offense tackles? I wrote that down by one of these guys. Don't tell them that. Though. I know, I know. But but listen, a guy when I put with the 49ers. Uh, Joe Staley, oh, came yeah. to Central Michigan, Pretty good. as as a tight end, transferred. I mean, and, and moved to tackle. He's gonna be a Hall of Fame uh, tackle. I'm not saying that's the case, but if that is. I mean, that's an op, you know. I just 
thinking out thinking out loud here with these bigger tight ends. We joke Zach Potter if you put weight on that. Yeah, he totally could. On yeah, he probably. could. <laughs> <laughs> and you look how it ended up working out, you know, for him uh, in the NFL as well. I, I look at these big guys. There's two distinct. There's blocking tight ends they're, they're recruiting, mm -hmm. and there's pass catching tight ends. You kind of can see the difference. Um, let's go to Eric Ingerson and talk about him. And he's another one of those big bodies. Yeah, legacy guy. Um, you know, Everything, his, right? Everybody. His, his <laughs> two uncles are Tim and Mike yep, Green. Yep, right. Played with Jay back in the day. Um, but 6'6", 250. Um, you know, and he's a guy that can easily get a 270, 280. A lot, well, I mean, he's a basketball player, too. So he, he keeps good feet, runs. Um, he was committed to Pittsburgh. And, you know, the, they offered him early, committed early. Um, but then Nebraska stayed on him and was they were able to flip him during his senior season. But um, a no-nonsense, just tough kid. You know, you really like his attitude. He's going to come in and work hard. And, um, you know, he, and he wants to be a Husker. That's the key. I know it's not a surprise, but I wrote down notes on all these guys, and almost every one of them, two sport athletes. Yes. Some three sport athletes. It's important. It's, 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 it's incredibly important because it just develops other proprioception with, with the body. You right. know, in, bas in football, it's very inline. You know, there's some agility stuff, but it's different. Basketball, you got to kind of know you have to have self control. You know, wrestlers, it's oh, yeah. understanding ground forces and physics of in body positions. Balance. Track, speed, all these things. Baseball, hand-eye coordination. All, you know, there's, it's very important. I mean, Urban Meyer said they, you know, they never recruited a kid unless he played two sports. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's it's vastly important for these kids to have, you know, be dual or triple sport athletes. Also helps with the injury. If you're doing the same yes. thing, repetitive injuries happen. If you're playing yes. different ones, your body changes. Oh, look, we're, we kind of buried the lead. Carter Nelson, yeah, uh, one of the players of the state. Technically, the highest rate guy in this class. I mean, we, we have him at 41 in the final top 100 of on three. Got a chance to see Carter at the Polynesian Bowl all week on just that stage. And, you know, he more than held his own. For a guy playing 11-man football for the first time in his career, um, just moves around well, has great hands, um, and, and he's a competitor. Like, he wanted to win. I don't care if they are playing tug-of-war <laughs> as a competition at practice, dodgeball, or football. And, you know, you look at what really helped him, Michael, was his track accolades. As a sophomore, he high-jumped seven foot. That's incredible. And that was a state record. And he's also a, a guy that can pull ball over 14 feet. And he has the school record in the 200 meter. He throws a discus over 170 feet. Um, you know, he can throw a shot put 54, 55 feet. So just an unbelievable combination of athletic ability. Yeah, by the way, he's a pretty good basketball player too. Right. It's really hard to judge him when he's going against the guy's half his size. <laughs> it's, it's really difficult to judge him. But yeah. if you just watch how athletic he is no, it's, in space. It's a, I mean, man amongst boys Yeah, you know, an eight-man ball. But again, just getting an athlete like that, that's so good at all these sports and the competitor. And I think people are like, can he, you know, convert it 8 to 11? Well, we've seen him do it in two All-Star games already this winter. So I, that's not going to be an issue at all. And we've seen guys do it before in the past. Oh, absolutely. Let's go to the offensive line. One of the guys I put in my Super 6, Grant Bricks. Can you talk about getting him here and how much they work to get that done? Yeah, number one player in Iowa. And, and on three ranks him as an interior O-lineman, one of the best in the country. But he'll play tackle at That's Nebraska. what he looks like, a tackle, yeah. And, you know, you look at him, even at the All-American Bowl, and that's a young Grant, Grant Bricks picture there. He is much bigger even now than yeah. that. Uh, I'd be curious what his actual weight is today if he's over 300 because uh, he is very physically put together. He's an early enrollee. And, you know, Logan, I look at it as almost an in-state school. It's right over yeah. the river next to Blair. Yeah. Um, you know, they, we make them watch our TV stations. We make them listen to our radio stations and get our newspapers. So that, that, he's like an in-state guy in a lot of respects, even though he is in western Iowa. Um, and, you know, where he lives, there's a lot of Husker fans. And, you know, I, I just think he felt comfortable with Nebraska. Daniel Kalen was big. Carter Nelson was big. Right, right. Um, Jake Peters was another guy that was big in helping recruit him to come to Nebraska over Oklahoma and Kansas State mm -hmm. uh, and some of those teams down the stretch. The only thing about it is pass blocking. Mm -hmm. Never really had to do it there. They didn't, they didn't throw the ball much. So now he's going to have to kind of learn that because he pretty much is a run. Well, yeah, he looks fantastic coming off yeah, the line. Really I mean, yeah, his, his hands, feet, his, his offensive line coach did a fantastic job with him and, and just keep him pad level for a tall guy. I mean, he's really, really good. But, yeah, didn't see a whole lot of, uh, you know, you know, the, you know, kicking back there and, and well, like taking, on, yeah, no. kicking on, taking on a DN. But uh, I, trust me, uh, I think Coach Rayella will get that handle rather quickly. I put an asterisk by the guys that really jump out on tape. Landon Davison does that. Hey, he, that could be a steal. Yeah, big explosive guy. Colorado is one of the more under-recruited states in America. By Colorado. Because mainly the Buffaloes <laughs> yes. decide that they don't want to go there. Right. So, look, 
there's way more people in Colorado than Nebraska. Sure. And there's a lot of good three and four star level players there. Um, and, and the Buffaloes, I don't think, took any this year. Nope. Um, so I think for Nebraska, you can go in there and find a guy like or two like this every year. Landon Davidson came to camp. And there was about six to eight guys in this class that got their offers at a camp workout by Nebraska. Mm -hmm. He was one of them. And Matt Rule sent that message. If you come to camp and you work out and you do well, we will offer you. Where a lot of times you go to camp, you just kind of get put on the list. You get slow played. Um, Matt Rule makes it a priority. Like, hey, if you work out for me and you do well, you'll get an offer. And that's how they got Landon Davidson. He didn't start wrestling to his junior year, junior and senior year, and he won a bunch of meets, and he hadn't wrestled his whole career. Uh, let's get into Mike and Mazuka, talk about him, bringing him in. And, uh, again, this is a guy who's played at a couple different schools, done some transferring, but he's choosing to go back to the guy he knew from high school. Yeah, I was surprised, guys, he didn't come here last year. I mean, he picked uh, Florida. And then he regretted it. And, you know, I, I remember we had our coverage ready to go thinking he's coming, and he didn't come. So that was a blow last year at the time but now they get him and he gives them an experience what 28 game type starter over yep. his career yep yeah he, he had um and in his in his starts he only gave up total of four sacks in over 1600 snaps his pff grade would be as good or better than anybody on the current husker roster yeah and he only gave up six quarterback hits and 21 total mm -hmm. hurries in over 1600 snaps it's incredible that's pretty good. That's really good, that's actually. Pretty good. Is that pretty good? A it's, I think it's him. really good. Yeah. yeah. Get to Jake Peters and talk about him a little bit. I like Jake Peters. I think we talk about a, you want to talk about a dual sport athlete. I mean, he's yeah. an offensive lineman that also plays basketball and, and, and is a track. So I think yep. I've seen some highlights of him and. Uh, you know, maybe not, there's some development, but this is an athlete and he has some footwork. And I, that's a guy that's sneaky, I think, in, in two, two, three years is a guy that's going to be uh, relied on heavily to, to secure that offensive line and, and protect Dylan Raiola. Now, he was not offered, correct me wrong, Iowa camp. or Iowa State? No, yeah, he was offered by Nebraska at camp. And I remember when he showed up from afar, I'm like, oh, Tyson Terry's here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought it was Tyson Terry. And I'm like, it looks like an old school Nebraska offensive line. But yeah, blonde hair, kind of cheeks. You know, kind of reminds you of like the old school throwbacks. Like Lauren Kaiser was a point guard for his basketball team at right. his size. And, yeah. you know, like you remind you of that. He, he You watch him play basketball, yeah. he moves, like really, Jay said, really on those well. basketball. That could be a 1984 photo, I'm telling you. <laughs> that could be. He looks like that. Let's get in a Gibson pile and talk a little bit about him out of, out of Houston. Yeah, he is one of the more decorated linemen along with Bricks. He played in the All American Bowl. Um, received an invite after performing well at the FBU Top Gun Camp, which um, you know is is a kind of a feeder into the All American Bowl. Um, out of Houston, yep. uh, Nebraska had their satellite camps. He was I, I ran into him and met him down there uh, this summer. Uh, but he was a priority. He was one of like the first five or ten real priority kind of base commits that built this class together. One of the things that Nebraska was known for for a long time was going in Hawaii, getting the Polynesian kids. Preston Tamoa is the, one of the best players coming out of that state, and he is a huge individual. Mm -hmm. It's big, it's a huge get, and there's a lot of that history with Nebraska, with yep. the Rayolas, and uh, you just, the other, there's some, a few guys on the roster when I was at Nebraska as well, on offensive line and defensive line, um, that are, you know, that we be able to, you know, bring back that, uh, that history, so it's, I mean, he's a huge get. I mean, this guy is good, it's. Number one player in yep. Hawaii. And he's nasty. You watch his tape, he finishes a lot. You gotta be careful in the Big Ten, they'll throw a flag. He <laughs> finishes guys through the ground. He fits in very well with the personality of Donovan Raiola. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and you know, Donovan was at Polynesian Bowl practices because he could, because his nephew was playing. So mm. I know for Coach Raiola, it was good just to hang out and probably watch uh, Preston play a little bit out there. Yeah, he, he looks like he's gonna be a good one in a couple of years. That was it for the offensive side of the ball. When we come back, we're going to switch to the defensive side of the ball. But first, some more photos from last season, courtesy of Herdette Sports.
Welcome back to Big Red Wrap Up. It's time to check in on the week sideline survey. What has been the biggest win of the offseason so far? And it continues to win, retaining Tony White, defensive coordinator, 47%, getting Dylan Riola, 36%, bringing back some key players, 15%, and only two. Where do you learn about Glenn Thomas? That's when you're going to move. There, he'll <laughs> fix that 2%. 2% for the new quarterback coach. All right, time to talk some defense now. And we start off in the one area that I thought was a little weak is not the word, just not enough guys. Mm -hmm. But it worked out pretty well to end up getting a guy late. Let's talk about Ashton Murphy first. Yeah, you know, you talk about last year. They, every guy they took almost panned out. Yep. So they, they're doing well on their young numbers. But Ashton Murphy was a priority early guy, um, weight room leader, really lean. And you almost like the fact that, you know, he's 225, 235-ish because you want him to develop and build the right way. Yeah. He was the leader of that Elkhorn South weight room, um, throws the shot put 55 plus feet. You know, so he's not just a football player um, and he's here early now. So you'll see Ashton kind of come in, but him and you know, Maverick Noonan was a teammate of his. He's got a lot of friends and close connections on this Husker roster. He's got a lot of work to do in the weight room to get bigger. We saw against Westside. He had some trouble against, you know, a pretty good offensive line. So, but I, I think we've all seen those guys come out of Elkhorn South. They're, they're sending out defensive and offensive linemen every year. So we know they're going to be good. Um, and then Keona Wilhite, late add, um, talented kid. Another guy, he's bigger than 230, by the way. That's that's not right. Played his arms good on his knees, by the way. And he had a five-star teammate on that team down there, but he was committed to Washington lost their head coach. At one time, he was committed to Arizona. Arizona. They lost their head coach. Yeah. Chip Kelly, he was a silent commit to the Bruins. And Chip Kelly's still interviewing for jobs right now. So he's had some bad luck. And Nebraska just came in and wowed him with the stability that they have here at, in, at the program. Do you know your wingspan? I have no idea. I can look it up. His is 80 and a half. It's not my, no. I, 80 and a half. That's, that's long. That's very long. This is, I mean, this is a guy, you know, just perfectly fit for this 3-3-5 defense. Yeah. That's going to play that four-eye spot that Ty Robinson plays. Obviously, everyone has to play that kind of plays all over the line, but that's that perfect four-eye, which is just on the inside shade of the tackle. Um, and kind of working inside out and setting the edges and, and getting, off, getting off tackles and making plays. We talked Texas and Florida. Nebraska's had success in Arizona. They've had a couple of different classes where guys came out of Arizona and played pretty well. Yeah, and I think with the Pac-12 kind of imploding, yeah. you know, it's it's open ground now because it's a Big 12 state now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? no doubt about that. Uh, let's get into Willis McGahey, the fourth, because we were talking about the positions in the 3-3-5. He's going to play the jack. He's going to line up at the line of scrimmage yep. many times as an end. He is quick, he's explosive, and he's – I know he's only 6'1", 230, but he plays bigger than that. Big time program, Christopher Columbus there in the Miami area. When he committed to Nebraska on the spring game last year, I think you were kind of like, well, we'll see if this one holds out because you knew a Florida guy in Miami, but give Philip Simpson, um, who was a former high school head coach of Homestead in Florida and uh, the coaching staff members in Nebraska, a lot of credit. Evan mm -hmm. Cooper is a Miami guy too, right. uh, for kind of keeping him in this class because uh, he's been as committed as anybody uh, in this 2024 Husker class. Watch his pass rush. He uses his hands well. He's got different moves for a high school kid. And you know what he does every time he gets to the quarterback? Knocks the ball out wow. of hands. Really, Every time. It's, it's interesting, you know, as we all know as his pops was. Yeah. You know, and you think he'd be a running back, but nope. No. He's going to play opposite. But yeah, he's, I mean, right, I mean, that's, I mean, that's just that. violent. He is. Violent, understands, very well coached. You know, it's, it's a lot of times guys are very raw and developing pass rush moves, but he has a, a multiple, um, he has a lot of tools in the toolbox, as we say. And no he can he can bring power or speed. Yeah, he's, he's going to be a good player. Vincent Shavers, guy that came along a little bit later. I remember it was right around the time of, was the Iowa game or right around that area? It was late in the... The no, I mean, year. even later, like right before signing day. Fine so signing day. Right? Vincent Shavers was committed to the Miami Hurricanes for the, right. most of the process. And then the week of signing day or mid-December, uh, Miami kind of toyed around and kind of gave them an excuse about their number situation. Um, and Nebraska came in and, and with the Phillips Simpson connection down there in Florida, Evan Cooper, they were able to get Shavers on campus for a visit after he was a longtime Hurricane commit. And he's an early enrollee, so they had to kind of flip the paperwork quick uh, to get him here on campus, and now he's here on classes. Yeah, you know, this is, again, an example of another guy that's just really explosive. Um, great last name, Ernie Shavers, former heavyweight champion. Um, but, I mean, he, again, watching him on tape, 
it's a kind of a, it's weird that these guys aren't going to Miami or Florida or Florida State or FA. There's a, so many schools in Florida, but we, Nebraska gets them. That's awesome. It was great, but he yeah. just a guy who you know on paper it says he's six one. He just long, looks he's long, 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 very long arms. Very long. And obviously, Florida guys, you're bringing speed, speed and athleticism. Yeah. Another transfer. Let's go to Stephon Thompson um, from Syracuse. Obviously knows Tony White's defense pretty well. Yeah, played with Tony White in Syracuse. Started as a freshman there. Um, stuck around Syracuse this last year. Well, they had a coaching change with Dino Babers being let go. Uh, Fran Brown coming in. Um, he'll come in with two years of eligibility. Um, and, and you look at that linebacker position, guys. Luke Reimer gone. Nick Henrich gone. Uh, Garrett Snodgrass gone. They, they lost a lot of veteran players in that room uh, getting uh, John Bullock back was big um, just to have another depth sure. older piece uh, but I, I do think when you talk about priorities in the transfer portal getting a veteran linebacker like Thompson was yep. a big one also he started as a true freshman at Syracuse He's one of only like 10 guys ever at the school to start the season as a true freshman he played amazing. seven games got banged up Did McNabb start as a freshman mm, I don't believe so not the first game I don't believe so um, but well, you know who might have would have been um, Marvin Harrison might have started as a freshman. But I think there's only 10 guys total out of Wow. Them. Let's move to the defensive backs because there are a lot of them. And we kick it off with <laughs> Caleb Benning, obviously another legacy, yep. uh, and a kid who played on both sides of the ball and was a great punt returner. Yeah, just a, a phenomenal athlete, great kid. Um, obviously, we're biased on, 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 with this, on yeah. uh, the show here. Um, and rightfully so. I mean, just a really, I mean, uh, know all about his dad. It's been fun to see him play last year. You know, his, his junior season, he got hurt and just yep. be able to play more. Be able to come back and, and have a, a big role in that Class A final game against uh, Gretna just a couple years ago. Um, that great game. But just guy can do, do it all. And just a great athlete. Best tackling high school player I've ever seen. It just his instincts for the game yep. and separate him. Yep. You know, he's not going to win the 40 yard dash or the exactly. or like the track competitions, but his instincts bring him intangibles for the game or what bring him over the top. Another two sport guy obviously plays for Westside's basketball team as well. Uh, Mario Buford, uh, I guess you call him kind of a legacy since his, his brother's here. This kid on an island at 5'11", 170, I, I was just, I kept rewinding. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, he's so good. I think he's set up to compete for playing time very yes. early in his career. I agree. Because Tommy Hill graduates soon. Hartstug's getting old now. I mean, so he, he's putting himself up to come in here and have a chance to compete. And Matt Rule loves Mario Buford. He's the highest ranked defensive back in what is the largest defensive back class I've ever seen at Nebraska. Yeah, and at 170, I saw him knock at least four guys completely off their cleats. He's he's not big, but he's physical and, like I mentioned, on an island, he's a great corner. So, and great pickup. Absolutely. Those intangibles, right? Yeah. And just he plays bigger than what he is. The other guy who I really I like a lot is Roger Gradney. I didn't know anything about him until I watched his tape. First of all, as a kickoff returner, he's dynamic. As someone who represents the uh, the Jet Award, love that. Um, I believe he had four touch he had four kickoff returns to touchdown this year. And he had a hip injury that kind of like put his recruiting in jeopardy. Um, where it was, you know, and, and, and Nebraska came in and, and got him early. They they kind of bet on Gradney before everyone else did. And then he got his ranking and he stayed committed. That was another guy. You talk about uh, McGahee, you know, a lot of people were like, man, uh, Gradney's a guy that they took early. Like, oh, can they keep this guy throughout the whole process? But you see the athletic ability. I'm more interested now, Jay, where he projects because he's got a great frame that could grow into maybe a linebacker. It could, uh, yeah, yeah e easily. Just you know, you can take a, uh, a tight end, move him to tackle. You can take a DB or a safety and move him into that linebacker spot to play on the. I wouldn't say play on the edge, but you can move him up there or a, a role like Isaac Gifford, right? Where you kind of that hybrid role, safety linebacker, where you can come down and you can play in the box and be very physical. Yeah, Rex Guthrie too, another guy here um, that we take a look at out of Colorado. Uh, Nebraska offered Rex out of camp and you know another guy that didn't come in with any offers right came in with nothing on the table just balled out um, Nebraska think you know I, they, he's really similar to Caden Vermas I think when you look at this guy Caden Vermas currently a commit to Nebraska for 2025 yeah granny real quick I just want to point out that not only did he play two sports he ran 100 meters, he ran the 200, he triple jumped, and he threw the discus. He was a complete <laughs> track and field athlete. Like incredible. A team. Uh, he was exactly, yeah. he covered the whole team. He was, he's incredible, he's gonna be fun. Rex Guthrie, you know what I like about him is that he tackles like a grown man. He lifts guys off their feet, he jackknifes dudes, he, he did by the way this zone this uh, drone video for the highlights is incredible it, it shows everything but watch him play he's already more advanced than most guys you'll see as a tackler 
And he battled an injury, though. Like, that's notable that he got hurt his senior season. Right, yep. But his intensity, and he's a 4-4 guy with, you know, 36-plus inch vertical. Another one of those guys that came to camp and just tested off the charts. By the way, 106 tackles his junior year. His one complete year, 106 tackles as a high school player. That's, that's, uh, mm, that's incredible. I only played 10 games, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think he actually ended up playing 14 because they okay. went to the playoffs, but still, he was just, he's still 109. Bly Hill, let's talk about him uh, transferring. Yeah, St. Francis, um, but uh, a DMV guy from that D.C., Maryland, Virginia area played um, in Baltimore for his high school football. Um, his father, Leroy Hill, was a former NFL linebacker. Yeah. Ten plus years in the league was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year for Clemson, Clemson right. uh, years ago. But uh, Bly Hill, great length. He's a four to play three. So this is kind of a long play transfer. This is not Jamal Banks, Isaiah Naor. This is a guy that hey, you know, we, we're going to get him for four years in this program to play three. Here's another example: long, very long wingspan, long torso. He is a guy that he's going to put on 15 more pounds and maybe. He's a hard-hitting starting safety for them. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. It reminds me that that frame, of Tommy Hill. I don't, yep. it, I don't know if Tommy was quite 6'3", but just that long. Yep. And just, you know, if you get in that press coverage, you can kind of reach your hand out there and jam him up, and you really haven't even lost any ground yet. So yeah. uh, you see a lot of NFL guys, you know, like uh, Sauce Gardner. Yeah, you exactly. You know, that long exactly. type of body. Great comp. Yeah, so that's comp, yeah. kind of how the game's kind of evolved that way. He wasn't the best player in the Metro, but every time I watch Donovan Jones play, was solid. Everything, picking people off, everything he did on the field, he was solid. He willed his way to a Husker offer. He came to a Friday Night Lights camp, and I don't think he was on the radar that night to get an offer. Really? He made them offer them. I mean, the way he performed, the way he tested out, the way he worked out, the Husker coaching staff just all gravitated that night to Donovan Jones, and they're like, wow, like, Coach Martin didn't tell us this guy was this good. Like, I mean, they knew he was good. Should have asked uh, me, I'd have told him. Uh, but they really love his uh, attitude, you know, great culture guy that they're going to bring in and, and test it out well. Had a great camp. Um, but, yeah, a big guy to get from the Omaha metro area. Um, father, a great family, too, uh, that they're bringing into the program. Yeah, and great instincts and another track guy. Another guy with speed who, um, who's got long limbs as well. Uh, Braylon Prude, again, a guy I didn't know a lot about until you watched him on tape. What you Saw him the night he got his offer. It was in Houston at the satellite camp and was not on the radar at all for anybody. And 6'5", 190. You know, there, there were tons of talented players at this camp. And Matt Rule, Tony White, Evan Cooper gravitated to watching him. And then the next thing you know, Matt Rule said, I'm going to offer this guy. I believe it. And he walked over and offered him a scholarship in Houston on the field that night. A week later, Prude is in Lincoln for an official visit, and then he committed shortly after to the Oscars. Playing linebacker, he had to deal a lot with guys blocking him. Mm -hmm. And good hands. Talk about how that could help him translate and be a defensive back. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's it's hard for – that's technique, right? And to play play physical, play with your hands. Yep. Young players, they don't have the strength. They want to use shoulders. You know, obviously, you can get caught up and held. Um but, you know, it's, I mean, 6'5", I mean, that's just an impressive frame. And Matt Rule already said it, they're big. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm looking at them. So, obviously, um, that, that was a was case. But big, long, athletic, and can play with technique, and it can get his nose on the ball. I mean, you, you'll take a player like that all day. Another Miami player, Sean Amari Sanders, uh, out of Gulliver Prep. Yeah, this was a late guy they added down the stretch in the class. You know, it felt like... All the way back to June, July, Nebraska was the team to beat, but he held things out all the way till December, and they were able to get him. And again, I think the Evan Cooper, Phillips Simpson, Miami combo was big. And then there's a good group of Miami kids in this class that we highlighted. So, you know, if you're coming to a foreign land, which for a kid in Miami, Nebraska is a foreign land. <laughs> yes. You know, it's like it's like going to Ireland. My passport. You know, like, right. so you've got a group of these guys coming up here together, and I, I do think. You hope that that will make the transition a lot easier for him. That's a good point, yeah. Bringing your own boys with you is kind of cool. Um, speaking of that, Larry Tarver from there. Larry Tarver, in three years, 15 interceptions. <laughs> Every highlight is a pick. I'm like, I started counting. I'm like, wait a minute, let me go look this up. He had five picks as a senior and 10 more as a junior and a sophomore. So in three years, he had 15 interceptions. That's a skill. A nose for the ball, having great, you know, uh, ball skills, awareness. Again, we were talking about proprioception, right? Um, yeah. And just understanding your body and space. And you got to, as a, as a DB in the secondary, you got to definitely have that. But yeah, it's just some guys have that knack, you know, uh, an Ed Reed. Type yes. of type of player yeah. um, as a, a potential comp. I know it's, yeah. but it, always around the ball and has, has instincts to get, get in the way of it. I'll give you a Nebraska comp, Jean Gomes. Mm, Every very, time the ball good. went up in the air, 
Dejon Gomes got the ball every single time. Um, what did you think about the target? That was another, like you mentioned, late ass. Yeah, it took him, you know, Maryland was where he was going to go, and he switched to Nebraska. Um, so that was another one of those kind of December surprise. I mean, they just kept growing this class. You're like, well, they're full. Yeah. <laughs> they nope. Kept, nope, nope, <laughs> nope. And he was a guy they added late. And look, I think Matt Rule is in the business of making room for good football players. Yeah. And, and Tarver will make Nebraska better. Yeah, like he said, he'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. He'll find. And that's, there were times under Bo Pliny, I remember, where they brought guys in, and I thought to themselves, just put them in a spot. Instead of, you know, trying to figure, just put him in a spot. Don't overthink Harrison yeah. Phillips. Exactly. Take yes. him. Yeah. He doesn't fit as a three technique. I don't care. He's an athlete. Right. Put him in there. That happens sometimes. Let's get to uh, some of the questions from Facebook. Robert asks, or Robert Weller asks, what is the status of stadium upgrades? That doesn't start till 25, right? Yeah, we'll play a whole other season. But yeah. I think what people want to know is what's it going to look like? What's the plan? And, you know, look, there's 22,500 people that sit in the south end zone. Yeah. And that's, that's a good chunk of your grassroots um, – you know, that, that's your grassroots fan base down there in the yep. south end zone. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people really want to know, you know, what's the status of that south. And, look, th- this will be the last year of the south, we think. Yeah. Then in 25, it will be gone, and probably for 26, too. That's scary to think about. You know, these people have been there forever, generations. It's already the, you know, there's no bathrooms, right? It's hard <laughs> it's, to get in and out of. separated from the rest of the no elevator, elevator. Yeah. No escalator. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's great that they're going to fix it up, but I feel so bad for those well, people. I have, I have friends and family that have seats in there. Yeah. They've had seats in there for, you know, 10-plus years, and yeah. they're like, they don't, they don't know what's going to happen. Do, and they're yeah. they're asking me, I'm like, listen, I don't I don't I don't I grew know. up in I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't talked to really? Trev about it, so I, I hope, uh, I said, you're going to have seats for 24, I know that. Right. 25, you, you might be, uh, it's up in the air. Sean, do you know what the final um, attendance is supposed to be? What's going to be the capacity now after this? They, they haven't set the number. It's be under 80, though, right? Yeah, 72 to 74-ish. Yeah, so old school. Um, yeah, and I think the biggest thing is the east and the west and the south have chairbacks. Right. So automatically that's going to cut down capacity, you know, 15 to 20%, sure. if not more, in that part of the stadium. The north, though, they can't put chairbacks in unless they want to tear it all down. Right, right, right. Just Because of the way the concrete and things are built. Exactly. Uh, Jim asks, how do they plan to get down, I asked you this before, to the scholarship limit? It's, it's the most asked question in Nebraska, I believe. I mean, I, I, people just are so always interested who's going to get thrown off the boat or, like, how, how's, how's the roster going to get trimmed down? We don't believe in that, um, right? We don't believe in that. Because Well, they've never – and last year they were in this position, but Matt Rule has until the end of the spring um, to, to move players on, and they give them the option, like, hey, um, you can stay here on scholarship at Nebraska as a student right. or go in the portal. Um, and any player that they did not sign, they have the ability still to do that with until basically the end of the spring. Right. Now, eventually, though, the cut down happens in the fall, right? Like um, before the season starts? I would say the cut down will probably happen, you know, if there's some players that move on yeah. in May. That portal is open April 15th through April 30th. That's not a lot for Nebraska. It's only, what, six days after the spring game? Three. Three days. 27th, so, right. You're you play right. on the 27th, 27th and right. essentially – those exit meetings are going to happen. It's going to be tough. Pretty quick. And I would imagine there could be some guys that, that enter the portal, you know, in the last week of spring ball. If they know they're going to leave and right. not play in the spring yeah. game. Anybody out of, uh, from Dustin, uh, Dusty, any of the things that you would, uh, recruits that you would say you think I'll play right away? Out of the guys we just went over. There's I, a lot of them. I, well, I think right, obviously Rayola. <laughs> uh, um, I, think, I think, you know, you look at those, those transfers that, came, that are coming in from other schools. Sure. Um, At least one of those wide receivers. Carter Nelson. Right, yeah, yeah. Carter Nelson. Yeah, the, those, you know, the receivers, you're going to have to. Just because uh, just because of the injuries, right? You, you need some depth at that wide receiver spot. I'm, I'm looking for Gavin's question. I don't see Gavin's question on here. Oh, oh. how do I get my pocket square? <laughs> so perfect. That's funny. Um, in terms of the way special teams are set up for Nebraska, the way it went last year, do you feel confident in it? Because that's been a big question people have asked me. Yeah. Will they have returners? They should. I mean, it is so hard to return punts in college football. And I shouldn't be I'm talking here to the uh, the head of the Jet Award. Yeah, I believe in it. Yes. It, it, it's, I mean, a punt return is so much harder in college football than it ever has been before with the yeah. rugby punting and the, mm-hmm. the way guys punt the ball. Um, but, yeah, can you get a confident athlete back there that can make plays? I mean, you, you feel like there's some on this film tonight yeah. that we watched. We had more kickoff and punt returns as a nation last year than any of the three years before that. Not all together, but each year. So it, it kind of came back a little bit last year, but it's still really hard. All the rules are against bringing back kickoffs and punts. 
they, I agree. They, okay, they, I agree. Yeah, if they would. We could wrap up. We'll be back for a while, but Nebraska Public Media does have you covered with some things coming up soon. Sorry, Jay. Starting with the NSA Bowling Championships this Saturday, February 10th at 8 a.m. Central. Then on Saturday, February 17th, tune into the NSA Wrestling Championship live at 3 p.m. Central. And finally, the NSA Swimming and Diving Championships at 11 a.m. Central on February 24th. Also be sure to catch the Omaha Supernovas versus, versus the Orlando Valkyries. That volleyball match is Sunday, February 19th at 5 p.m. Central, Nebraska Public Media. That will do it for us. For Jay Moore and for Sean Callahan, I'm Michael Severe. We'll see you right here next year on Big Red Rapids.